Well, Franz, this is the second time around for us. Thanks for asking me over again. Well, it's great. Uh, you're from one of the cities that's called the smartest city in the world. How did you get there? Why did you get that reputation? I think most importantly is that we did a bottom-up approach and we did a lot of citizens' engagement. And we're not afraid to share our lessons learned or our failures, uh, basically. And as we were one of the first movers, we had to get through a lot of difficult stages to, uh, to succeed. And I think uh, one of the um, success factors of Amsterdam Smart City is, is that's an open platform. Tell me, what, what does that mean? An open platform is that it's basically a facilitating platform uh, which is financed by the Amsterdam Economic Board and Alliander, which is the electricity grid operator in uh, the Netherlands. So it's on arm's length uh, of the government, which makes it easier to take a bit of risk with uh, pilots or projects, because it doesn't have the political uh, consequences immediately. And basically what we do is matchmaking. So somebody comes up with an idea, whether it's the government or a company or a borough or even a university, and we'll try to find the right partners. All right, so now, this is my next question. Uh, you are uh, operating outside of the government. Yes. You're a separate organization. So yep. how are you governed? How is this smart city uh, institution organized? Uh, it's organized with a steering committee and in the steering committee are all the strategic partners like KPN, the uh, National Telecom Incumbent, like the City of Amsterdam, like Arcades, which is a big uh, engineering company, uh, the Amsterdam Arena, the National Soccer Stadium, but also the University of Amsterdam and the University of Applied Sciences. And basically they decide what's going on and which direction we go. You, are you the executive director? There's a staff, I assume. Yeah, there's a staff of about seven. And uh, if you want to say the executive committee, it, committee is the steering committee. And we are just there to facilitate. We have a few people who are project managers. Uh, it's a lot about communication, to tell them what you are doing and also to uh, tell the citizens what you are doing, to try to get them engaged. And uh, I'm just one of the seven uh, uh, employees, one of the seven staff within this open platform foundation. All right, so you said you do uh, bottom-up projects. Yes. All right, give me an example of a project that you've done that's had a big impact on the city. Um, which had a big impact on the city is, uh, for example, to install smart meters into houses. And instead of uh, giving uh, one company the, uh, to be the preferred supplier, we just installed five different meters in each, each 100 homes and asked the feedback of the people, what do you think of this meter, what is it lacking? And one of the feedbacks we got is that um, basically people are not interested in how much energy they're saving, but how much money they are saving. And to have the feedback from all these five different meters we asked, we put out a tender and we asked the, uh, uh, the manufacturers of smart meters to manufacture a meter according to the requirements and the wishes of these people. So these meters were measuring energy, water, what were they measuring? Uh, they would be uh, measuring uh, especially electricity and uh, also gas and there com it comes with an additional uh, appliance that for example if you're using your vacuum cleaner or Hoover, uh, it will show you how much energy this is using. So even with switching on a, a light bulb or switching on the air conditioning, it will immediately show you how much energy you're using. And how much money you're saving. And how much, many, um, and how much money you're saving. Apart from that, it's also remote controlled. So you can control the smart meter with your uh, uh, mobile device by, um, if, for example, if you're going to be late and usually your heating uh, uh, switches on at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, then you can tell the system, okay, don't start heating up the place at 5, but at 6 because you're going to be late. Or uh, even one step further is uh, it gives you the opportunity, they say, okay, you're going to use a lot of energy now uh, and this will cost you so much money, but if I, if you 
going to use it a little bit later, like two hours later, you will pay a different tariff. So it's up to you the choice to switch off your freezer or your air conditioning or... All this sounds good, but you, made it make, you must have made some mistakes. Yes. We, so what are some of the things that we should look out for? Um, is uh, one of the things, the mistakes we made is that to ask the utility company to install these meters. And uh, I'm not sure what the situation is here in Australia, but the utility company are not on the top of the list when it comes to trust and uh, uh, in these companies. So basically a very simple solution we did was giving all these people from the utility company an Amsam Smart Meter, uh, Amsam Smart City body warmer and they were welcomed and with coffee. Um, uh, another thing we, uh, uh, the f uh, lessons learned there is that we started off by saying, okay, this, you're going to participate in this smart meter project. And instead of asking the people, would you like to get involved in the smart meter project? So that's one of these typical bottom-up things instead of top-down or we're going to install the smart meter there now would you like to participate and you choose within that community you choose a few ambassadors and they spread the word around at uh, with the neighbors at the neighbors and then people are getting involved there last question economic development now smart cities have been praised for the opportunities for new businesses new business innovations and so forth how have you done this in Amsterdam? Have you had a lot of new smart businesses, startups, or things like this? And what do they look like? Um, one of the things uh, which we did in Amsterdam is to deploy fiber to the home. So a fast consumer communication network. And that gave especially the startup companies, uh, especially in gaming, the opportunity to work from anywhere in the city mm -hmm. and not being together anymore. Uh, the other thing uh, what we did is to reduce the commuting for uh, civil servants. So people who work in the physical uh, physical planning, so like the infrastructure or the energy or uh, physical so planning many. department, they all have access to all government buildings that are related to it. So people do not have to communicate all the time anymore. The other thing what the CEO in the city of Amsterdam did is uh, putting a very bold statement and said we're going to reduce office space by a third. And I don't care how you do it, but you have to think differently about how people are working uh, together. So basically he shut down um, 70 buildings out of the 200 government buildings that are owned by the uh, city of uh, Amsterdam. And what you see, it, uh, because you, you give a playground uh, to a lot of uh, uh, small companies and startup companies, so it spreads the word and then people and companies are coming to, uh, uh, to Amsterdam. So one of the projects we're doing now is a startup in residence. So we basically start up in residence. Yeah. So we basically asked a few startup companies, uh, please uh, come and move in with the city of Amsterdam. These are the problems we are facing and the challenges we're facing, and we need your help as startups because we can do it the traditional way. But let's see if uh, uh, you startups can do uh, uh, come up with an innovative idea. And of course, needless to say, that one of the uh, imperatives for that is open data and make sure that it's an open source uh, solution so if something changes that it's uh, not going to be uh, void or um, um, useful. useful yeah excellent excellent it sounds like uh, Amsterdam is on its way to being the smartest city in the world now you just have to make us a little bit smarter so we can work with you thank I'm, you I'm more than happy to collaborate and why invent the wheel, why I think it's about sharing knowledge these days is uh, knowledge and experience is the way forward. So instead of uh, inventing the wheel yourself just come over to us and let's see where we can collaborate. In. Excellent and we get all get on this platform and have a better world. Absolutely it's in the end it's it's uh, a cliche but it's all about the happiness of the citizens. Thank you.